I'm Johnny Smith from The Late Break Show. I'm Richard Porter from Sniff Petrol. Now, you find us outside the supercar paddock, probably one of the busiest parts of the Goodwood Show. Oh, it's busy. Yeah. Uh, we're going to go and have a look round, and of course, what's the first thing you think of when you think of supercars? Renault. <laughs> no. Sorry, I don't know much about cars. Is it Ferrari? <laughs> yes, it is. Let's go and look at some Ferraris. Let's go and have a look at the Fly Black Horse. The Flying Black Horse? Yes. It's not Lloyd's Bank. <laughs> it's Pegasus. It's Italian <laughs> Pegasus. Now, I think the most exciting thing from Ferrari here this year that we haven't seen a good one before is this, the Daytona SP3. It's the latest in Ferrari's Icona range of limited run cars. Uh, this one is called the Daytona because it's celebrating uh, the 1967 Daytona 24 hour race when Ferrari took a 1-2-3 with 330s and a 4-1-2. The design of this car sort of inspired by that sort of 60s endurance racer. However, with I think a little 80s it's, touch. The back is really 80s, very Testarossa-esque. We can't see the back, sadly, slats. but trust us, it's very slatty. Yeah. It's nice. And the, that, in, that, that, that intake there in the yeah. door with the relocated door mirror. Yeah. It's unusual, isn't it? Mm, nice. It's very, very nice. Uh, it's got a V12 in the middle, 829 horsepower, no turbos, no hybrids, and that makes this the most powerful internal combustion only Ferrari road car ever. If you'd like one, two million pounds to you, sir. And even then they wouldn't sell me one because I've never no, bought a new Ferrari no. before. And they're only making 599. However, there are other Ferraris here we haven't seen at Goodwood before yes. that aren't limited edition. We're going to go and look at one of those over here. Okay, right. so, well, we've moved a couple of Ferraris down uh, to the 296. Uh, GTB, I like this car mm. because it's a plug-in hybrid and it's a V6, so it's a little bit unusual on the yeah. Ferrari recipe. First Ferrari V6 road car since the mid-70s, but uh, combined with the hybrid system, it has 818 horsepower, so you certainly can't complain about that. Yeah. This colour scheme on this particular car is a little bit of a tribute to the racing cars run by Marinello Concessionaires, uh, the uh, UK importer of Ferraris. From the olden Seriously days. Uh, yeah, it's uh, originally it was Cambridge blue with Italian racing red. Um, I don't remember the racing cars having blue wheels, but each to their own. It's certainly striking. Yeah. Uh, yeah but this is. is not the limited edition. This is, and I'm using the word entry level Mass advisory, production. but it is an entry level hybrid Ferrari. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the engine alone, 663 horsepower. Yes. It's not bad for a V6. It's not at all. This is the thing. Bad. Once upon a time, supercars had to have V12s. People were very snotty about anything less and then yeah. V8s came along and that was accepted. Now V6s once people are a bit funny about Honda NSX. Is it a supercar? It's only got a V6. No, it's not. But this, yeah. if you think it's not a supercar, you can come here and fight us. Now, <laughs> there's one more thing I want to look at down here. Okay, this is the final Ferrari I'd like to talk about today because, again, it's not been seen at Goodwood before. Now, we thought that the Daytona SP3 was quite a rare thing because they're only making 599 of them. This is a one-off. Uh, it's called the SP38. It's part of this programme Ferrari have where for its very valued customers, and if you've got enough money, they will make a car that looks the way you want to look it. In this case, somebody said, I'd like a 488, but I'd like it to look a little bit as if it's inspired by an F40. Oh, really? Don't see it myself. However, not entirely F40 inspired, because they say this slender black bar here is a tribute to the 308, and that I do like. Yeah, I can see that. I can see that. So there's I a little bit of Magnum in this car, is what they're saying. You <laughs> well, like? you could have ordered it as a WD40, but they called it an SP38 instead. Yeah. It does sound Close. like a specialist hair product. But right. it's, the name's irrelevant. Uh, I want to go and look Hennessy. at the Hennessy. Let's look at that. Venom. Not just Venom. Venom S F5. F5. F5 taken from the Tornado scale. Yeah. Gives you some <laughs> illustration of how completely crackers this car okay, is. Right. So you want, a, you want American muscle, it's an American hypercar really, I mean the, the, the figures are bonkers. Over 300 mile an hour top speed from a 6.6 .6 twin turbo uh, V8 uh, Chevy LS base motor. It's basically a drag racing engine isn't it? From what I can gather. Which is yeah. interesting. It's 1817 brake horsepower, okay? which means it's a thousand horsepower more than Ferrari's F8 Tributo. The thing that gets me about this car is that they quote a naught to 250 mile an hour time. I don't think I've ever seen that done before. It's 15.5 seconds if you're interested. 15.5 so, um, seconds. I think you can safely say this car is quick. It's now we heard a whisper that yesterday at Goodwood, 
uh, a racing driver was driving this up the hill in the wet in race mode and apparently it was very lively and you will notice that it's got a yoke steering wheel yes. so if you need to get some corrective lock on you'd better hope it's not more than about that <laughs> um, yeah <laughs> I just I'm just so blown away by the, the power figures, the over 300. Over 300. Not just 300, over, over 300. However, John Hennessy, the Texan man who is Mr. Hennessy, he has said that he wants this car to be equally drivable down a British B road as it is spearing across the salt flats at 300 miles an hour. So who knows if he's come good on his claim, but it's certainly I'm, a bold one. I'm interested. I'd like to see that over there. I've noticed with interest in the supercar area yeah. um, a number of old names being resurrected it's true, from the yeah. past. Yeah. This is one of those. There's another couple we'll come on to in a tick. Yeah. Delage, mm. very old French brand of, um, of, of high performing yeah. car. Tandem two seater. Yes, the I D12. noticed this. Not to be related to M&M's crew. <laughs> Were they called D D12? Yes, maybe. I don't know. I'm 47. I'm far too old for that now. Uh, what I will tell you is this has got a 7.6 litre V12 yeah. and an electric motor. Yeah. 1100 horsepower. Quite a lot. Uh, this was shown a couple of years ago, but it was just very much a static show car. This now runs, or so they say. I, um, I'm, I'm of the thought that if you don't particularly want a Messerschmitt bubble car, yes. a Twizy's not cutting it for you. But you do want a tandem two-seater. I do, I do. Delage Prayers top. answered. 2.3 um, million, um, million uh, dollars. Dollars. American. If, if you want one. Uh, they're only going to make 30 as well. So if you are a Twizy owner who wants to upgrade but loves tandem seating, get in there fast. It's still French as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right, let's go around the corner. Um, now, th this just caught my eye because, I'll be honest, I was a little ignorant of it. It's uh, Calman. Basically, for years, I've wanted a singer, but I wanted them to be Danish. And now, thank God, these guys have come along. They built this car for Tom Christensen, King of Le Mans. Oh, did they? The legendary Danish driver. Oh, OK. But they will do one for other people as well. So, yeah, if you uh, would like a singer-style recreation of an old 911, but a little bit more Danish, then... Kalmar. They will help it you out. It looks very clean, I have to say. It looks very clean. Now, you know what we were talking earlier about? old brands coming back from the past well we're just gonna we're walking past the bikes oh. we won't talk about them in too much detail but old names like Bruff Superior BSA they're all back the BSA back Look, there's a BSA brand new BSA Gold Star who's doing that BSA are doing that but BSA went bust yeah but they've been bought by I think it's an Indian company oh. you know like the Enfield yes yeah yeah I think it's it's um, have you ever seen that video of someone drawing the pinstripe on a fuel tank at the Enfield factory? No. By hand, with no help, yeah, just... It's, it's beautiful. I Look it up it. on YouTube. I like Enfield. When you finish watching this. Yeah, obviously. Now, again, another old name that's come back. And it came back a couple of years ago with a big announcement uh, with people like Jensen Button, Ant Anstead, the, uh, the TV mechanic. Yeah. And TV he, and mechanic. I don't, well, he is a TV mechanic. <laughs> He's a mechanic. He's on TV. He's a TV mechanic. And, and here it is. It's getting a lot of attention because it's bloody good. This um, is, I think, a very I, nice look, looking I've car. I've actually got some top Trump style cards oh, for sorry. you on this car, which is that one there. Yeah, the client commission. The Radford Type C. Well, they're nice. all the Type 62, nice. and there's three different versions. You get a JPS livery yeah. one, which was here last year, I think, mm. for its debut. To me, quite a, a Porsche sort of look to the front, but it is a Lotus. It's based on Lotus. They have an arrangement with Lotus. This is all officially endorsed. Yeah. The badge at the front you'll see is a Lotus badge, but not just any Lotus badge. It's got gold in it, and it's made by jewellers in Birmingham's jewellery quarter. Very nice. What yeah. else can I say about this car? It's a Lotus underneath. It's an Exige, stretched Exige. It's still got the 3.5 litre Toyota supercharged engine that you find yeah. in many yeah. Lotus sizes. All carbon fibre. All carbon fibre. Uh, including um, the wheels, which are beautiful. Like four, would you call them four or eight spoke? Ooh, I call I them four. Four, four times two. Yeah. The mirrors uh, look like little sort of endurance racing mirrors, but those are cameras feeding screens inside in the modern way. A lot about this is very modern, although the overall look sort of is referencing older cars. Uh, they're only going to make 62 of these in total, so um, not many to go around. But if you want a car where you can say, my handling was set up by Jensen Button, yeah. then 
That's true. This is your best bet. This is the most powerful iteration as well, this particular car. So this is 605 brake horsepower, uh, 0 to 62 in 2.9. So again, two point, everything's under three seconds. Pretty much everything around here is under three seconds. You know, you were just talking about that Ferrari being the most powerful naturally aspirated yeah. Ferrari V12. Yeah. Well, let's head over there because Lamborghini are doing a similar thing. Let's go over there. On that side of things. Okay. Yes. The final Aventador, AKA Ultime. Italian for final. Also a range of bras, I seem to remember. But what this signifies is your dear old Aventador is coming to the end of its life. Yeah. And that means this is the last naturally aspirated V12 Lamborghini that we are likely to see. There will be a replacement for this car, but it'll be a hybrid. It won't just be a walking great engine doing all the work on its own. And what work it's doing, 780 horsepower. It's the engine from the uh, Aventador SVJ, but with 10 extra horsepower just to see the old girl off in style. This, but I get a bit confused with all the Aventador editions because there's been quite a few. Well, it's a, it's a famous fact that uh, the only car with more limited editions than the Citroen AX is the Lamborghini Aventador, but this is the very, very last So one. this is his retirement, this is his care home swan song. Yes, unless of course they do a Pagani. You know, Pagani can't stop making the Zonda. <laughs> If Lamborghini have the same affliction where they just go, oh, just one more, yeah. just one more. Oh, just go on a, then. Just another oh, one. since it's you, one more. But yeah. failing that, and I assume they won't, then this is the last Aventador. So, um, no, it's the DJ Khaled men, um, mantra of just well, another one. Being rubbish. Another one. Oh, I see, right, yeah. Okay. Um, should we go around that corner and look at the latest McLaren? There's an AMG one over there as well. Oh, we should look at that. Yeah. Oh, on our way to McLaren, uh, Singer here, of course. This is uh, the DLS, the one that's got the bespoke air-cooled oh, yes. flat six that they made in conjunction with Williams Engineering that's in it. That's right. It has been seen here before, but it's always would like to see it. They've got that turbo study here, but not here. It's over by the Cartier Lawn, so we'll have a look at that yeah, in another yeah, yeah, video, yeah, yeah, hopefully. Yeah. Um, it's got the oil filler um, in the rear Like, quarter. like the was it 72 was the only year 911 that did it, but 959s had it as well. Fact fans. Did they? Uh, Hispano Suiza are here. Remember Hispano Suiza? No, of course you don't. They were founded in 1904 and they disappeared decades ago. Spanish supercar company. Well, great news, they're back. I know you've been waiting. Electric hypercar called the Carmen. So um, if you've been waiting for a Hispano Suiza, Suiza even, Suiza. Uh, your wait is over. Also a hell of an entry in Scrabble. And here we are, McLaren. Now, uh, a few minutes ago, we saw the Ferrari 296, a V6 hybrid. Fair. This is McLaren's yeah. V6 hybrid. Um, Thank you. It's got a three litre V6, developed with help from BMW, apparently. Um, but it's, it's also got car. electric motors, batteries, you can plug it in so you yeah. can run zero local emissions in urban areas. Um, we saw this car here at Goodwood last year. It was, it was plugged in, wasn't it? That's right. It's been running a little bit late, is the truth of it. It's now technically on sale. If you've read the recent reviews of it from the press launch, you'll know that a um, few teething issues, but they're assuring people they will sort those out when customers get their cars. It's a pretty thing. Yeah, I, I, think, like it's, it. I think it's one of the I best like looking. this yeah. big sort of intake here. Yeah. It's it's a, it seems to be a sort of similar look to me to the Amira and that Maserati. Yes. Which was also here last it year. It has and I love the Lotus -y, look Lotus -y look to it. Yeah. Um, if you're trying to decide between this and the 296 GTB, this is uh, 190 grand, so it's a snadge cheaper than the Ferrari. In case you're surprised about we, 200 and a bit. So. Okay, we're not going to be able to control the scrum around this car because there will be a scrum all day. This is the GMA Gordon Murray Automotive T50. So. The, the upper echelon um, model, they've only got two models at the moment, T33 and this, difference between it, this is the flagship, three abreast seating, uh, manual gearbox if you want it. Um, the front looks a little bit like a Toyota MR2. No, I'm not gonna say that out loud. Uh, but 12,100 RPM um, maximum revs on that NA Cosworth yeah. V12. Yeah, the bespoke V12 made just for this car, or just yeah. for this car and its T33 sister, but still it's quite an undertaking for a very, very low volume yeah. car. Yeah, it is. It's, it's, and I think the joy for these cars almost is 
it's, it's the nerdy engineering. I mean, there's pa pages and pages of, of notes you can make about a car like this, and that's why people are pouring over them, because it's not a car you're going to see very often. And your yet, life. though very few people will get to experience it, they will have the peace of mind of knowing it's been developed just like any other car. Because uh, yeah. Gordon Murray Automotive released video of it going through all of the stuff that cars do we don't even know about. Deliberately driving into kerbs to make sure that the suspension isn't critically damaged. That's and if right. it is, you know that it is so you don't keep driving. That's what they do to Nissan Micras, they have to. But Gordon Murray's done it to this car as well as all part of the development and homologation process. Oh, so it right. is a proper car, he wants you to use it every day. Yeah. Will people do that? It's no. unlikely, but I hope so. I really, really hope so. It would be nice so. to think. Quick run to Waitrose in it. And um, it's even got luggage space. And it wants you to go to Waitrose in it. If you can't afford a three abreast supercar like this, you could buy a Fiat Multipler. Matra Bagheera. Matra Bagheera. Is it a Honda HRV? Yes. There are other options there if are you're craving three, oh, oh, three abreast. New Land Rover Defender. Yes, with the optional three abreast fold seat. Um, let's move further down here if we can. It's very crowded today. Oh, this is a bit of a treat. Yeah, like last year when we were here, the, the Maserati DMC 20 appeared and it's there right now. But this is a topless version and it's called Cielo. Double bass. It's the, Ita <laughs> it's the Italian for sky. And, and I think that's why this car is this beautiful sky blue. This, I think, looks better than the coupe. I love that. Uh, I'm Shot just through. excited that Maserati are building cars that seem to be exciting mm. and aren't going to date badly and seem a bit lukewarm. This is this is not lukewarm. You, you know the v, V6 mid-engined. Uh, I think to about two hundred and six thousand pounds for the hardtop. This they reckon about two hundred and thirty thousand pounds. Same weight as the MC20 coupe. So they say. Yeah. I, I find that amazing because it's got a glass roof and it has uh, LCD in it so that you can tint it oh, or nice. you can let it go light. Or of course, you can electrically retract it. The other tricksy thing about this that's quite a neat touch is that it has this massive trident on the engine cover as well, so you don't forget it's a Maserati, or at least people in helicopters don't. Uh, I think this is fabulous. Because you can't car. see the engine in this one, whereas you can in the other car. But apart from that, I think they've done a fine job. Interesting fact that I know you would love. 24 hours ago, David Beckham's bum was on that seat. Really? He came and sat in it. He wanted to have a seat in it, apparently. Yeah, probably all well, Would you order it with the Maserati decal on the deck? I don't know. I'd have this colour, though. Yeah, I this would. This is fab. I think it's absolutely brilliant. I really like well this. Well done, anyway. Bravo, Maserati. Nice Giello. Round the corner, more tasty treats. Right. You don't see Vantages around much, do you? No. It's weird. No, felt like the old don't. one, you used to see them all over the place in cities and things, and now... They're a great second-hand buy now. I know that's not what we're here to tell you about, because <laughs> this is the new stuff. Suddenly become used car news in Supercar but, uh, Paddock. But a V8 um, Vantage now, 40 grand. Yeah. Right, there's one final car we want to show you, and it's over there. Right, right hidden one behind last a wall. thing. Now, a we've wall. got to sneak down here and get around the back because there's such a scrum at the front of this car. Bloody hell. One of the most hotly anticipated things. Not new, it's been around for ages. Like People have known what it looks like. It's the yeah. Mercedes AMG One, famously there. F1 inspired hypercar. Now, the F1 in connection comes primarily from the fact it has a 1.6 litre V6, supposedly the engine from a Mercedes F1 car. It's not. They've had to work very hard at things like making it just sit happily in traffic, which yeah. a road car has to do. An F1 be. car, as we know, anyone who watches the Formula One knows that F1 cars get very grumpy, even behind the safety car, never mind at five miles an hour on the M6. So they've had to work extremely hard creating an F1 alike engine allied to a hybrid system makes for 1,048 horsepower. Another V6 first. Another V6. Yeah. No more V6 snobbery anywhere because no. even at this level and of course in Formula One there is a V6 engine at the heart of the cars. Stunning thing, 275 are going to be made worldwide so again it's one of these cars like the T50 and stuff you are that's why they're under such scrutiny here you just will not see them out in the wild hardly no. ever. Um, this is uh, two and a half million pounds there Yeah I believe it, it is. So, yeah, yeah I think so, it is. So there are a few barriers to entry one of them being yeah. supply the other one being price but um, this, know, is more, ever... this is going to be more about the driving experience because and I know that sounds bad because when you look at the 0 to 60 and stuff you're saying it's 2.9 to 62. There's an awful lot of sub three second cars. Yeah. I mean, te Tesla family cars are sub yeah. three seconds. I think most of the stuff that we've looked at here in the supercar paddock would match strides with this. And this has been in development for five or six years yeah. now. It's been a long time coming because they've had so many difficulties making it work. Yeah. And 
it's it's on paper not not incredible not mind-blowing but but then at the same time it has this sort of sheen of an f1 connection i'm sure collectors will go for that who knows i sort I of saw feel... one testing when i was filming a, an electric car launch mm. at millbrook i wasn't allowed to film it or take any photos of it i can tell you it sounds like a strimmer ah. i actually thought it sounded like a strimmer. someone's strimming around it yeah no it's the amg1 do you ever embark on a project at home and your wife says is this a good idea and you you're too stubborn to admit that it's not that's most weeks of my life this is that on a corporate scale mercedes went we're going to do this and then they realized it wasn't working so well but they couldn't admit that they had to give it up and now at last they've bloody mindedly got it working just like me and those shelves it's very tricksy yes. um the front end is the is it looks fantastic. good and it is drawing a crowd which is something that a supercar has to do that's sort of the point of supercars yeah. really they bring joy to other people not necessarily the person driving them i always said yeah. that about the aventador the nicest way to enjoy an aventador was from another car yeah because then I you can look at it i agree it's a and theatrical beast it's a show you're putting yeah. on a show and if you want to see a show you want to see some beautiful cars that draw crowds come down to the supercar paddock it's fabulous you'll be one of millions of people that's true <laughs>